Good afternoon, everyone. Let's now pray the angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mary, Mother of God. Let us pray. For for we beseech thee, O Lord, your grace and your hearts, that we do come to the incarnation of Christ, your Son. May it known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let's now begin this Holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, today the, Mo the Holy Mother Church celebrates the memorial of St. Pius X. When we go through his life, we understand how beautifully he embraced poverty and also how beautifully he brought about lots of reforms in the church, especially in liturgy and bringing back the Gregorian chant and also encouraged the lady to read the Holy Scripture. So today as we come to celebrate the life of this beautiful uh, saint and pope, we acknowledge God's presence in our lives, and there are times where we have failed to understand God's presence in our lives. So we shall ask God for his forgiveness and mercy so that we shall worthily participate in this Eucharist. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let's now joyfully proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of God, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. I offer this Mass for Peter, Jelomia, and Franca Orup, who are deceased. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. O God, who to safeguard the Catholic faith and to restore all things in Christ, filled Pope St. Pius X with the heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude, graciously grant that following his teaching and example, we may gain an eternal prize. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. It was our God who gave us the courage to proclaim his good news to you in the face of great opposition. We have not taken the preaching because we are deluded or immoral or trying to deceive anyone. It was God who decided that we were fit to be entrusted with the good news. And when we are speaking, we are not trying to please men, but God, who can read our inmost thoughts. You know very well, and we can swear it before God, that never at any time have our speeches been simply flattery or a cover for trying to get money, nor have we ever looked for any special honor from men, either from you or anybody else, when we could have imposed ourselves on you with full weight as apostles of Christ. Instead, we were unassuming, like a mother feeding and looking after her own children. We felt so devoted and protective towards you and had come to love you so much that we were eager to hand over to you not only the good news, but our whole lives as well. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I've made a covenant with my chosen one. I've sworn to David my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages. I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus showed himself to his disciples, and after they had eaten, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Look after my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset that he asked him the third time, Do you love me? And said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Dear friends, today the Holy Mother Church celebrates the memorial of Pope St. Pius X. He grew up in a family which has very limited resources for their daily living. It says he walked six kilometers every day to his school. This poverty char characterized his, in his whole life, and it was not just a matter of physical poverty. St. Pius X was a man who was truly poor in spirit. We read in the Beatitudes where Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. After 26 years of priesthood, he was made as a bishop of Mantua, Italy, and later as Cardinal Archbishop of Milan, and finally as Supreme Pontiff of the Universal Church in 1903. He remained as a simple person and practiced poverty in his entire life. He, he was saying to one of his friends, he said, I was born poor, I had lived in poverty, and I wish to die as poor. I wish to die poor. And also, he, he was talking to one of his old friends, you know, he just, you know, he talks about his embarrassment. He says, look, how they have dressed me up, you know, how the popes were dressed. So he was a bit embarrassed and see how they have dressed me up. Pope Pius X is responsible for moving the age of First Holy Communion up to seven and encouraging the lady to read the Holy Scripture every day. And also he brought back the Gregorian chant and reformed the liturgy. And one of his strongest advice to the praise, he says, your homely must be clear and simple. Hope we all try to do that. You know, your homily must be simple and clear. And also, he initiated the codification of the canon law. So every priest, you know, when they're ordained, they always take a motto. The motto of our, um, the, his papal motto was to restore all things in Christ, to restore all things in Christ. He, drives this he draws this inspiration from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 10. And actually, it is a part of St. Paul's canticle of praise, in which the apostle places Jesus as the center of things, as their beginning and final end. All things have their meaning from Christ. All things reach their perfection through Christ. And anything that has fallen away from the good can only be restored by Christ. So when we read the whole of his life, we understand how he, in, at every moment of his life, as his papal motto goes, to restore all things in Christ. He was interested in politics. So he encouraged the, the Italian Catholics to become, you know, to involve in politics. One of his first papal acts was to end the support, uh, supposed right of the government to interfere by veto in papal elections, a uh, practice that reduced the freedom of the 1903 conclaves, which elected him as well. So in 1905, when France renounced its, um, renounced its agreement with the Holy See, and threaten confiscation of the church property if governmental control of church affairs were not granted. You know, such was a great threat. And as his papal motto goes, to restore all things in Christ, he courageously rejected the demand. He courageously re rejected the demand. So eventually, in 1914, Pope Pius X died, you know, reportedly from the natural causes aggravated by the start of the First World War. His reading of his history tells us how, you know, how wounded he was when the world was started, and that's the cause of his, you know, cause of his death, probably by stress. So I'd like to conclude my reflection today by a historian who talks about the pious 10th life. He says, a man of God who knew the unhappiness of the world and the hardships of life, and in the greatness of his heart, wanted to comfort everyone. In the greatness of his heart, wanted to comfort everyone. So dear friends, today we celebrate um, you know, the life of a person who was totally, you know, lived, uh, you know, totally lived in poverty and also totally trusted in God. In everything he wanted to do, he solely relied on God and he did his best. So today we celebrate, as we celebrate his life, let us also imbibe some of his qualities in our lives.
Dear friends, um, today is the final day of our retreat. Uh, you can be seated. You can be seated, please. Um, on the final day of our oblate retreat, um, we always renew our final commitment um, through the renewal of our vows. You know, all of us, Father Archie, my 60 years back, and Tony maybe 54 or 55, and, you know, like varied years of, you know, when we finally professed our faith, uh, professed yeah, through in, the, in the congregation of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, at the end of every retreat, uh, annual retreat, we renew our vows. So today, that's what we are going to do. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the presence of the most holy trinity, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of St. Eugene de Nazareth, and all my brothers here present, I profess, promise to God, and vow chastity, poverty, and obedience for life. I also vow perseverance until death in the Holy Institute and Society of the Missionary Oblate of the Most Holy and Immaculate Virgin Mary. So help me God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Receive with kindness our oblations and grant to our Lord, we pray, that following the teachings of Pope St. Pius, we may celebrate these divine mysteries with sincere reverence and receive them in a spirit of faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Pius X, you bid your church rejoice, so do you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his praise. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without the end we acclaim, Holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life on the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, Don, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Peter, Chilomia, and Franca, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. <clears throat> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, Blessed Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and uh, Pius, and uh, Patrick, and Eugene de Masmont, and Mary of the Cross, Philip, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Let's now offer each other God's peace. Peace to you all. And so we pray, Lamb of God. Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should hear unto the mother, but one is say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Celebrating the memorial of Pope St. Pius, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the power of this heavenly table, we may be made constant in the faith and be of one accord in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, go forth. The Mass is ended. Thank you and wish all a good day.